Hello and welcome to Two Day Pass. My name is Scott. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. And let's go. So we're here at Southall Test Centre, one of the most beautiful test centres in the UK. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Plus, it's got a huge dual carriageway roundabouts. You've got high speed limits, a very, very dense populated area with so much traffic. So if you do pass your driving test at Southall, you deserve your driving license. So I'm going to show you one of the most complicated routes now. We're going to get started here at the test center. I'll complete the whole route. I'll give you live tips and tricks to help you pass first time all the way around the route. And without further ado, let's get started. So before you drive away, you will be exiting the car park here on the right. So I'm just going to kind of drive past it. It's a little bit hard to see, but it's just here on the right. And providing you're a skillful driver, you'll be able to get your way out of that very narrow car park. Just take it super slow. Now, I'm coming out and going this way to the main road towards the big dual carriageway roundabouts and the and the dual carriageway itself. So I've been told to turn left at the end of the road, coming down here at a walking speed, quite tricky to see, right, left, right, minimum observations, always double checking the right side, mainly for motorbikes, and it is the most dangerous side, as there will be the traffic closest to you. Okay, so now we're just gonna follow this road. Your examiner will tell you at the beginning of your test, follow the road ahead at all times, unless road markings or signs tell you otherwise. If I need you to turn left or right, I will give you clear directions in good time. So unless you're given directions, follow the road ahead. Here we have a vehicle doing a reverse bay park into his house. I'm just going to check the interior mirror, right mirror, and it's safe for me to go around him gently. That helps me. Now, can you see there's a large vehicle coming? There's a van. You also get buses on this road. So what I'm doing is I'm just easing my way through here. What is this guy doing? Can he not see that there's two cars have pulled over here to let me through? And this guy just... Okay, check my mirrors now. Moving on. Not going to stay focused on what happened. I'm focusing on what's happening. It's very important if you feel like you might have made a mistake or somebody else has done something similar to the gentleman that just did what he did. Don't stay focused on that. Once that moment's passed... Take a deep breath in, out, and carry on. I'm doing what the traffic in front um, did for me earlier, where they pulled in, left enough space for me to pass. Check my interior mirror, my right mirror. There's no more oncoming traffic and moving out. Now, because they had got to this spot, this narrow point, that's what I'm calling a spot, earlier than I did, then the safest thing for me to do is stop. There's a saying, first come, first served. So whoever's there first, really, not that it says in the highway code you have priority, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Somebody's arrived at the junction before you, they're there first, they get to go first. In America, this is how it works at the four-way stop. The first person to arrive at the crossroads or four-way stop has the priority to go. There's the buses. You can see the bus signaling. That is quite a narrow gap. I'm glad the bus has stopped there and not come up any further. And I'm going very slow to get through there. At the end of the road, turn left. So I check my mirrors, a signal, and I position to the left just on the side of the vehicle that's next to me. Right, left, right, it's safe to emerge out. Would you walk out into the road? That is the question. So when you reach a junction and you're making the decision whether it's safe or not to drive out, ask yourself the question, would I walk out? If you have children, imagine you're holding their hands, you're walking them to school. It's the same decision as taking your child's hand and saying now is a good time to go and then gently following you know, through with them and crossing the road. So it's the same decision in a car. I really hope that makes you make a safe decision. Follow the sign towards Norfolk Harrow. So we're going to start the independent drive. We're going to be doing following the signs. So our sign there is turning right, third exit, the roundabout, mirror, interior mirror, right exterior mirror, signal right, position right. You can see like this vehicle in front and you can see the bus, two separate lanes. There's no road marking. This guy looks like he's just going to do it anyways. So I held my brake on, let that guy turn into the petrol station. You might notice I checked my left mirror to see if any motorbikes or other vehicles were coming. I didn't wave him through. I didn't smile at him. I didn't tell him to go. I just sat there. It looked like from his body language, he was just going to do it anyways. Past the first exit, check the mirrors on the left. 
come through, signal still on the right, check the mirrors into a left mirror. Now I signal left as I pass the second exit. No one on the zebra crossing, and it's safe to emerge out and go through that zebra crossing. Now, this zebra crossing is similar to the last one. There is an island in the middle. So as long as no one's using my half of the crossing, I can keep going. Very important. So that way you know whether you need to stop or not. Other zebra crossings are different. So some of them do not have an island in the middle. That that means they're one complete crossing. So look out, scan the road ahead, see if you can see any zebra poles with beacons on top. That way you identify a zebra crossing from a distance and then you can start to look for the island and pedestrians that may be around the vicinity of the pedestrian crossing itself. You may hear the bing bong noise that the car makes. You may already be aware of this because you're a subscriber to the channel. Make sure to ding that bell so that you get notified when new videos come up on the channel. But you might be aware that the ding dong noise means I've reached my speed limit. This is very important on a driving test, especially if you're on 20 mile an hour roads. Do keep looking for signs so that you know it's definitely a 20. I'm going to leave a gap from the bus here so you can see it's written in the road. Quite obvious. If you don't see signs, it might actually be a 30 mile an hour road. So no speed signs, 30 miles an hour. Otherwise, you're going to see what the speed limit is. I let the bus out because I had enough distance. It was safe. No one was immediately behind me. And the bus looked like he was pushing out. You know, he was looking at me. He was edging forward. So I just let him go. Turning left here which will be following the signs towards Oxford. So we turn left here, your examiner will give you all of these directions. It's just before the bridge, uh, bridge. And we came here on an earlier test route, which was a Yedding test route. Now the Yedding test routes are similar, if not exactly the same to Southall test routes. So if you feel like you wanna go check out the Yedding test routes to prepare you for Southall, go for it. Now on the last route I did at Yedding, I actually went straight across the target roundabout, which is the roundabout coming up here. And that's why there's so much traffic. This roundabout is a controlled roundabout. That means it has traffic lights at every exit on the roundabout. So it can actually help me to plan ahead. So if I get a red traffic light, I can kind of stop, look at the road ahead, see the road markings, maybe read the signs if I need to double check, and I know exactly where I need to go. And that can help me to plan and choose those lanes, do my mirrors, do my signals, position early, take into the road markings, see where my lane's going into the future and really have that benefit there planning and you know guiding yourself where you need to be on the roundabout even before you start to do it this is absolutely critical for you to be a safe driver not only to pass your driving test first time so yeah we've got a bit of traffic here on your driving test you will be asked to show me questions Sorry, to show me, tell me questions. So let's start off with the tell me question. This is usually done at the beginning of your driving test where you'll follow your examiner to the car. Your examiner will most likely ask you that tell me question as you're walking towards the vehicles. So let's start off with a question we haven't done on the previous videos. So Scott, would you be able to tell me how would you test to see that your power steering is working? So my answer to the examiner would be, I would switch the ignition on turn the wheel and check to see that it turns smoothly. This way I know my power steering is working. If my wheel is not smooth to turn, and you don't need to add this bit at the end, I'm just giving you a reference to what it's like or what the feeling of the steering wheel is like when the power steering is not working, then it's very hard to turn. You need two hands, good grip, and a big push. That means the power steering is not working. Nice and smooth and easy where you can steer with one hand or even your little finger. Don't do that while you're driving, just as a kind of analogy to know how light the steering will feel if the power steering is working. Okay, now we're going to do our show me question. So Scott, when it's safe to do so, will you show me how you watch, wash the rear windscreen? So I just have a button here. You might notice I've pushed the button. The back window washes and it stops automatically. So there's no need for me to now look down again or push the button again or turn the switch off. Nice and simple. Press the button. Job done. Now, when we reach the roundabout, we're going to be doing the most complicated turn at this roundabout. Whether you do your test at Southall or uh, other test centers like Greenford 
or possibly Yedding, you can be asked to turn right. Now, this is the target roundabout. Turning right on a multi-lane roundabout controlled by traffic lights. And not only that, having so many people around you because it's one of the busiest, if not the busiest roundabout in London can be very hectic. So let's start off with a little game plan. We're not even there yet, but maybe you've practiced roundabout before. So it can help you to kind of already plan exactly where you'll be going once you get there. So if we're turning right, third exit on the roundabout, what lane would you use? If you answered the right lane, you would be correct. Yes, you can use the right lane to turn right at a roundabout. Excuse me. Now, if the roundabout has multiple lanes, there is a chance that you can actually use the center line, uh, sorry, center lane to actually turn right also. And that can keep you into the lane that is better or safer for you once you reach the exit. Because using the middle lane will put you into the left lane automatically once you come towards the exit. If you use the very right lane at the beginning of the roundabout to turn right, third exit, then you will end up in the right lane when you come towards the exit of the roundabout. This isn't an immediate fail. However, if you keep using the right lane down the road thereafter, because this one actually has two lanes all the way after the exit down the road, which is classed as a dual carriageway. Any roads that have more than one lane are classed as dual carriageway. And if I continue to keep in that right lane, unless I'm overtaking or turning right, I can fail my driving test for not using the left lane when it's safe to do so. This is classed as positioning, normal driving. So if you've ever heard of anybody fail for normal driving, that means they're not using the left lane, which includes bus lanes, when it's safe and necessary. Okay, so we've reached a giveaway sign here coming up. You see it on the left, just around the side of this truck and we've got the giveaway lines which match up to the sign on the road itself which are the most important road markings which are the double white lines here on the right now i'm going to be turning right but now watch what i do because this is so important guys let me out so i'm just going to go just double check in that is definitely going to let me out as i was a bit slow so people can change their mind now look at the road markings here you see this white line here on my right i'm currently in the left lane I can't go in the right lane because there's roadworks, but I stay close to this line where the cones are, that line there, and that puts me into the middle lane. I'm keeping my right signal on because I'm turning right on the roundabout, and that signal will benefit people to know that I'm turning right. Now, if it's on or off, it doesn't matter, providing that you keep your lane. Now, I'm next to the cones, remember? So I come out here towards the cones, and can you see this is the middle lane next to the cones? Keep to this line, and now I've passed the first exit, check the mirrors. Look at the road markings, keep into this left lane now, mirror, mirror, signal left, there's a pass the second exit, and keep the very left lane. If I didn't come all the way over to the left, I could still be behind this pickup truck on the right, the one that we followed from the beginning, or I was using as a marker at the beginning. So I could use that lane, that's fine, and I can use that lane to exit, which is the right lane on the exit. Because it was safe, I actually chose the right lane on the beginning of the roundabout, which gives me the best chance to continue just to follow this lane, which takes me all the way to the exit. I'm in the left lane, it's nice and easy, no worries about me having to cross the path of another road user and potentially cut them up, or that's not the correct turn, but cross their path, which would then affect their speed, and if you affect the speed of a vehicle, make them slow or stop or swerve swerve means change direction this is a serious fault so make sure that you know your roundabouts very well so that you can choose the correct lane for whichever roundabout you may get on your exam okay so we've got red traffic light here just checking the internal mirror coming to a nice slow stop leaving tires and tarmac from the vehicle in front. Now, really what you need to see are the tires of the vehicle in front. If you cannot see the tires, you are too close. And if you subscribe to the channel and watch my previous videos, all of these comments, they'll start to become something you've heard before, which is good when you start to learn. Hearing the same information again and again and again will gently start to sink in. As unless you're a teenager, most of us, you know, we don't 
soak in that information anymore because we've reached an age where our brains are overloaded with so much information. We have to knock some of that information out to kind of put some new information in. That's my excuse. What's yours? Write it down in the comments below. But we get the idea, right? So if you practice enough, it's just going to become muscle memory to the point where horrible bump. Oh my God, I almost had a heart attack there. I hate, I hate bumps. Um, yeah, we become muscle memory to the point that when you go to do your exam, it should just be like you're just going for another driving lesson. If it feels that way, wow, you are almost there. You just need to get through the test, get your license, and that's it. Done for life. No more stress. And you have that beautiful feeling, that light feeling that you don't need to actually go through lessons, money, time, get time off of work. At the traffic lights, turn left, interior mirror, left mirror, signal left roughly 10 to 5 car lengths from the junction, corner disappears out the front of your windscreen, and that's the point where you can start to steer left. This is what we call reference points. So there's reference points for parking, there's reference points for turning, there's reference points for pulling over and stopping on the left, and all the manoeuvres. If you'd like to have a little look at that, get a bit more in depth, then you can go to the channel, check out the playlist, where you'll find more bespoke, bespoke, What's the number word I'm looking for? Specific or videos that you need to watch just on a certain topic. These ones are very broad, cover all of the actual test tips that you need to know, junctions and roads, uh, and the other ones will be more of a breakdown, longer, more in-depth videos specifically for a certain topic. Okay, so here we are on a road. This is a very long road. It's a 20 mile an hour road, and keeping to 20 mile an hour at, well, keeping to 20 mile an hour on a long road like this with somebody that wants to go faster behind you can be very anxious, very frustrating, very difficult to try and do. You need to keep focus. You need to keep to the speed limit. You mustn't exceed the speed limit. If you exceed the speed limit by more than 10%, this is more than likely going to be a serious fault on your driving test. So you need to be almost picture, picture perfect. Pitch perfect. You need to be perfect is what I'm trying to say. So just take care of speed limits. If your car has a warning chime that tells you've reached a speed limit, this is super helpful. Use it. There it is. So I don't go over the speed limit and I keep to the speed limit. I said it just now and I'll say it one last time. Going over 20 miles an hour is so easily done, guys. And too many test centers now or almost all 20. Now that's a good thing for your driving test, but please just make sure you keep to the speed limits. Okay, so we've got a lorry here stopping, interior mirror, check for change of speed, start to slow down gently early, showing the examiner that I'm aware and I'm planning, and then they'll feel a lot more relaxed. Maybe they'll fall asleep, who knows? Don't laugh because I've actually been in the back of an exam where the examiner zipped up his folder, closed his eyes, put his head on the window and I had about 10 minutes sleep. And then, yeah, that was pretty much the test. Student pass, zero marks. That's what we would like to happen, but would the examiner have fallen asleep if the person driving wasn't a very good driver, hmm? yeah? Right, okay, at the roundabout, turning left, mirror, mirror, signal left, slow down, just my speed, my position's correct. Now I'm checking the traffic at a nice slow speed as I come to the roundabout, and I've got a few vehicles on the right coming quite quickly, so I'm gonna stay stationary. Now I would walk out, now I accelerate, now I don't hesitate. Now if you're doing your test in a manual car, unless you need it, Please do not even get started with lessons in a manual car, let alone go and do an exam. Moving away at the roundabout, doesn't matter how experienced you are. I had one guy, he was driving for at least 30 to 40 years, you know, family man, driving around illegally his whole life. I've had lots of students like this. They're getting pulled over by the cops all the time now, getting fined, etc. So they've actually come round to, oh, I need to get a driving test done. And then they fail at a roundabout for moving off in third gear. Can't even remember, even though you're so programmed for changing gears, comes to driving test, even with 30 years experience, you still mess it up. That just goes to show you, big, grown, muscly man, you know, a father, 
of free and you know all the other responsibilities that come with being an adult and it comes to a driving test and you turn back into a kid and you crumble doesn't matter how experienced you are don't do manual everything's going automatic now look at the road markings i've not been given any direction so i go straight this is an unorthodox roundabout this lorry is a blocker that means it's going to block all the traffic on the right it's the biggest blocker you can get giving me an opportunity to go. If you don't know what blocker cars are yet, go to Classroom on the actual channel. You'll see the only video there at the moment, there will be lots more in the future, is about the roundabouts, really in depth, telling you exactly what you need to know, all the information and how to use a blocker and what the blocker cars are. Okay, I'm gonna do exactly the same principle at this roundabout, regardless of it not being non uh, unorthodox. It's a regular roundabout, it's normal. I can use the left lane, but I'm gonna use the right lane to go straight. The traffic on the right is a proceeding, giving me an opportunity to go. I did just check my interior and left mirror on the exit, just in case somebody was in the left lane, but I've been driving this road for way too many years now, and I've never, ever seen anybody use the left lane to go straight at this roundabout. I'm not saying it won't happen, it's just incredibly unlikely to happen as everybody goes left and into Sainsbury's. Okay, the, uh, the traffic lights turn left, to examine, I'll give you directions here, the traffic lights turn left, so you can see this is a left only lane, doesn't necessarily mean I have to signal as this is a left only lane, but I'm going to check my mirror, I'm going to check my left mirror, so interior mirror, left mirror, and I'm going to signal left roughly 5 to 10 car lengths from the junction. Why am I signaling left? Well, let's say a pedestrian comes to try and cross the road just here at the junction in front of me. If they see my left signal on, they're less likely to take that step out into the road as my signal will benefit them. So the signals are not just there for road users, they're there for pedestrians as well. And you might find this a bit silly, and you know what, before I even say it, I, I, it is a little bit silly, but I'm not saying it's not possible. Animals. Dogs are smart. They might see a signal. Whether they know, yeah, I know you're laughing right now. All right. That's all right. Let it out. Let it out. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself now. All right. I'm going to stop talking about that and get start talking about what's happening now. Right. So there's giveaway lines here. I've got to look right, left, right. Okay. If I don't look and I just drive across those giveaway lines... I can fail for observations at junctions. That has been the number one reason for like six years in a row now for, for people failing tests. Number one reason, observations at junctions. Okay, we're just gonna follow the road ahead and we're gonna be following signs for Heathrow. So the first sign we'll have will say Central London, which will be at the traffic lights. So a little bit further down the road. And then we'll see a sign for Heathrow after the first sign here coming up at the traffic lights, Central London. And then we'll see that sign like I just mentioned for Heathrow. So when we get closer to that, I'll mention that again. And then we're gonna keep following the signs to Heathrow. This part is gonna be incredibly technical and you'll need to focus a lot on what lanes I'm using at the roundabouts, just like previously when we came towards the target roundabout. So we're gonna be going Central London, turning left at the traffic lights, Filter arrows on, left arrow here, that means I'm good to go. Okay, and there we go. Doing a nice simple left turn, not too technical. And then further down this road will be that sign for Heathrow, where we'll be following the signs to Heathrow. A312S. The S stands for south, as you will have an A312N as well for north. Okay, so we're just going to go south, back towards the test centre, back towards Southall which will be following the signs towards Heathrow. Okay, so what's going on down here? A little bit of traffic. There's a pedestrian crossing here. So somebody might have used crossing. That's why we had a little bit of traffic. Seems to be flowing. But you see I'm keeping a nice gap from the vehicles in front. Remember, you must keep a two-second gap, especially when you're on a dual carriageway or a motorway, as this is the safety distance required by highway code. If we do not keep at least two-second gap from the vehicle in front, we will fail our driving test for following distance. 
seconds. Okay, anything less than two seconds is not safe. If it's wet, then this is four seconds. If it's snow or ice, it's 10 seconds, but you're not likely to have a driving test in snow or ice. Heathrow, okay, so we're following the road ahead, second exit. I can see there's a straight arrow in this lane. I haven't had any signs or road markings tell me it's a left only lane. So I'm gonna keep the left lane. I know now it's definitely straight. So I can see that arrow and I'm coming to a nice slow. There's a big, oh, lorry's going. So I'm gonna keep with this lorry. Now, if you notice that there's a big lorry next to me and the lorry is blocking my view. I knew there was a car coming, but the lorry was just driving out in front of the car. The lorry's a shield. I don't particularly want to wait for the next opportunity. So because the lorry is a shield, he's effectively there to protect me now. No one's going to get through that lorry. I'm going to match the lorry's speed exactly the same. So I'm perfectly alongside that lorry that no one's going to come round the back or round the front of the lorry. He's there. He's my shield. Now, that takes a lot of timing and practice. I do not recommend you do that on your driving test, but it's definitely good knowledge knowledge to have, okay? So once you get to a certain level of experience, if you feel it's a safe opportunity, because you've got a big shield like a lorry or a bus next to you, fine, take the opportunity. It's safe, it's helping the flow of the traffic behind you, go for it, okay? But maybe, depends on your level of driving, your skill set and how confident you feel, I wouldn't suggest using shields. Now, shields are different from blockers. Blockers are the traffic that's coming towards you around the roundabout that blocks the traffic on the right. Shields are that traffic that's next to you waiting to actually drive out onto the roundabout. This road is a 40 mile an hour road. I must make sure that I keep up to the speed limit. If it's safe and it's clear, good visibility, good road conditions, get up to speed. So I'm doing 36 miles an hour now. It looks like the van in front of me is doing the same. I can see there's traffic lights, pedestrians at the actual pedestrian crossing. I can see that there. So that light, the first one might turn green, uh, so it might turn red. So you see there's a pedestrian there. So I'm covering the brake. I check to see who's behind me just in case that light changed. We're going to Heathrow, A312S. So that is going to be the middle lane. Now you'll see A312S here in the middle. You'll see A312 here in S in the right. Why am I using the middle lane and not the right lane? Now, A312S Heathrow is going to be the third exit turning right. So, why did I choose this lane? Because, hopefully you got the answer, this lane will be the closest lane to the exit. This lane will be the left lane on the exit. This lane will be the safest lane to use to follow around towards the exit on the roundabout. Look at the road markings here. I'm keeping in the white lines. I'm not going over into the right lane that says A312S. I'm using this left lane that says A312S. Every exit you pass, it's a good habit to check your interior mirror, left mirror. And then here we are past the second exit, interior mirror, left mirror. And now I signal left. If you want to keep the right signal on from the beginning of the roundabout until you reach this point, you can. If you feel it's going to confuse other road users because they might think you're going to change lanes, that's fine as well. You can leave it off. As long as you're in your lane, that is a signal in itself which will show people what direction you're going. So the immediate right signal isn't necessary. If you're in the very right lane, I would encourage you to use it. But in the middle lane, it could be seen as slightly confusing. If you use it or don't use it, it will not make a huge difference to your driving test. The most important part is that you see the road markings, you stay in your lane, lane discipline, and you follow your lane towards the exit. Do your mirrors and signals once you reach the exit, before the exit you want, and that way you'll be telling everybody at the correct time that you're going to leave the roundabout at the next exit. That's what you will need to have on for the exit. So make sure you signal for the exit, always signal for the exit on the roundabout, unless it's a mini roundabout. If it's a mini roundabout, the white circle roundabouts, you don't need to signal for the exit because there's more importance to you keep control of the vehicle, keeping your hands on the steering wheel. At a roundabout, turn left, interior mirror, exterior mirror left, signal, and I'm roughly 10, 
now I'm about five car lengths from the junction. This is a good time to start to signal. I've checked the traffic early and I'm flowing through. Because I do this so early, take the next road on the left. This is a very sharp turn, like a U-turn. Your examiner should tell you. It's very sharp. I've had to put the signal on twice now because it cancelled twice. So make sure to have your finger ready to put on any signals that may cancel. And then we've done our left turn. Okay, so this is a long way back round towards Southall Test Centre. Uh, Yedding Test Centre would have been straight ahead on the road I just came off, instead of turning left here. And we're almost back. So, uh, when we got to the roundabout, yep, nice, good, check that traffic early. Early vision, early decision. Now, the real foundations and the secret to the roundabout, and I'll demonstrate this on this road, because at the end of this road is a roundabout, is the approaching speed. So as long as we approach a junction at a safe speed on your test, that would be called a appropriate speed. Now, appropriate speed means that you'll be able to react safely. So if you can't see, less see, less speed, less space, less speed, this is an appropriate speed. You slow down regardless of the speed limit. So I'm going to turn left at the roundabout first exit, mirror, mirror, signal, position, speed. This is what we were talking about. So I'm jogging speed now. It's enough for me to react. That's an appropriate speed. I can see because I'm doing an appropriate speed. Remember, that's the foundation to a roundabout, approach it at a sensible speed. Then I can make my decision early and act early. If I come in way too fast to the roundabout, then all of that decision making is going to have to happen really quickly and really dramatically and really late because you're not giving yourself an appropriate amount of time, an appropriate amount of speed to be able to make decisions. So, I can't stress that enough. If you're having difficulty with roundabouts, it's because you're approaching them too quickly. If you're doing it in a manual car, please do not just cancel your lessons and go automatic unless you need to. You're going to be wasting your money and your time for a skill that you will no longer need in the future as manual cars will no longer be manufactured. Why learn how to type a letter on a typewriter when you've got modern technology for you? Nobody goes backwards. The peer pressure and the stigma now is dying please do not get caught up in this whole world of you are not a, a proper driver is usually what's said you're not a real driver or something along that ignorant mentality just say yeah okay you're right you know what mm -hmm. yeah thank you all right that's your opinion and um I've got more important things to do now, thank you. And that's it. That's it. End of story, isn't it? You don't even need to tell people you're doing driving lessons or a driving test. If you can keep it to a low and not put it on social media, etc., this will actually reduce the amount of pressure on you for your driving test. Because everyone's going to be bugging you. What happened? Did you pass? Blah, blah, blah. And if it wasn't the result you want, the last thing you want to have to do is go and tell everybody you failed your driving test. Don't tell anybody, and then when you say, oh, I've passed my driving test, everybody's going to be like, what? You didn't even tell me. Oh, my God, that's crazy. And it's going to be a big surprise, a good surprise. You go out and have fun, celebrate, whatever it is that you want to do. But just having that feeling, less pressure, good result is a win-win situation. So I'm here to try and help you pass your driving test as quickly as possible. We're almost back now. At the roundabout, go right, third exit. So I'm going to use the right lane, mirror, mirror signal. Now bear in mind, this is an unorthodox roundabout, so you can go straight. I'm going to turn right. You will need this lane for straight and right, as the left lane is left only. So if you haven't kind of got to grips with what an unorthodox roundabout means, it means the left lane is left only. There's a gap on my right. There's no traffic coming. So I've kept this lane and I've proceeded, making progress. Every round, every exit on the roundabout I pass. I check my mirrors. That's the second exit I passed. I want the third exit. 
and I check my mirrors and signal at the second exit to tell everybody I'm going to take the third exit. Can you see the zebra crossing coming up here? There's a supermarket here on the right. This can be quite a popular zebra crossing. I can't see through the traffic clearly on the right, and that is a danger, as there may be people crossing behind the traffic on the right. So whenever you come to a zebra crossing and there's a lot of traffic on the right-hand side of the road, take caution that no one crosses in between this traffic at a zebra crossing. It's very common. Something, if it hasn't happened to you before, will happen to you in the future and can happen to you on your driving test. And then you will fail for pedestrian crossing, which is another common reason for people to fail. Turning left, mirror, mirror signal, roughly 10 car lengths back where I was chatting about the zebra crossings. Nice and slow here. If you're doing this in a manual car, you'll need first gear walking speed for this turn. When there's traffic coming out, it's more narrow. But as it is with or without traffic coming out of this road, it's super narrow. So make sure that you can keep control of the vehicle at an appropriate speed. For that turn would be first gear, five miles an hour. You would not want to go any faster than walking speed as it would be near impossible to keep control of the vehicle. And it may veer out into the oncoming lane, which would be a serious fall with or without traffic. Now I'm keeping a meter from this parked car. I'm reaching the center of the line and I'm turning right. I did my mirrors and signaled roughly five to 10 car lengths back. I'm in the center of the road here over the center line because I need to be, because I've got to keep one meter from the parked cars on the left. And that means I have to go over the center line absolutely fine not an issue because it's necessary and in fact I'm creating a safety bubble around my car I'm giving a meter from the traffic here a meter from the traffic here or parked cars sorry and that creates that bubble so if somebody steps out or opens a door no accidents will happen because I'm in a safe safety bubble area for me and my vehicle and to protect others obviously Right, we're almost back. So we're just going to follow this road. Now, normally on these back roads, just like the road we have here, this is the type of road you'll be using to do maneuvers, whether that is parking or pulling over and stopping on the right or the emergency stop. This will be done on a road like this one. Just take care. Look for spots to pull over that might be safe or convenient. That means raised curb. Do not block driveways or stop on yellow lines unless your examiner tells you it's okay. There's no tricks on the UK test. So if the examiner says to you, you can stop on the yellow line or don't worry about the driveways, this is not a trick. Please take care and stop on the yellow line or stop in front of the driveway like the examiner mentioned. Okay, I thought Sunnycroft was the road and Sunnycroft is the road and I just drove past it. That would be the end of the test as you would stop on that road, but I'm just going to stop here. And the test center is literally just there on the left where I started. So I hope this video has been of benefit. If it has, it's quite a long one. Please remember to leave a like. Comment down below if you have any questions. I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.